So proteins in poultry nutrition. Now, when you're formulating feed, two important aspects you want to look at are metabolizing energy and the protein content. Really the amino acid content, we'll get to that. But, but in order to meet the, the great genetic potential of modern day poultry, you really need to provide them with adequate amounts of protein and the amino acids that make that protein. So, what are proteins? Well, really, they're kind of uh, the workforce of life. They do everything. They're enzymes, they're structural proteins, there's transport proteins. They're very diverse um, in functioning and therefore very vital to life and vital to meeting um, the growth standards by, by modern poultry. And so, um, they are our macromolecule we're going to take a very, very close look at. Um, the polymer is protein and the monomer are amino acids. So here's an amino acid here. You have uh, a carbon, uh, an amino nitrogen containing group, and a carboxyl group. Uh, these, these amino acids will link together to form um, various structures. So you get to this uh, secondary structure, tertiary structure, quaternary structure. These are the functioning structures of the protein. Um, <clears throat> and so when you are um, thinking of protein, especially in, as a nutritionalist, you need to think of it in terms of meeting your amino acids. Because if you lack one of these amino acids, you can't make a primary structure. And if you can't make the primary structure, you can't make the functioning protein. And so amino acid percent, or the percent of the different amino acids is very important. So there's 20 amino acids. Uh, 13 of which are considered essential to semi-essential. Again, sorry for my penmanship. Um, what this means is they have to be accounted for in the diet. The chicken cannot make it themselves. Um, really, seven of these, we'll see them in, an, in another chart, can be made from the carbon skeletons derived from carbohydrates and, and other sources. And so we really need to look at the amino acid percentage. However, you can get an easy estimate of the crude protein, which is a, a measure independent of amino acids, just all of the proteins that are present um, in the feed. And one way to do that is to measure the nitrogen content of the feed, and you just multiply that by 6.25 and that will give you this crude protein estimate. And the reason why that is, you're going to find nitrogen in the amino acids, in the protein structure, and it makes up around 16%. And 16% is, so 100 divided by 16 is going to give you 6.25. And so taking your nitrogen from your feed and multiplying it by 6.25 will give you an estimate of the pr crude protein protein content of that diet. Okay, so there, there was our crude protein. Oh, I'm sorry. There's our crude protein, and so <clears throat> you can just look at the nitrogen content, multiply it by 6.25. Now, there are 20 amino acids. We established that um, 13 of those are essential to semi-essential, and so the amino acids are really what we need to look at when we're doing feed formulation. So here we have a table showing all of our amino acids. Uh, we have our essential amino acids over here, semi-essential, and then non-essential. So non-essential amino acid, all you really have to do with non-essential amino acid is look at that crude, crude sorry, protein percentage. As long as you have nitrogen available, the chicken is able to make all of these amino acids. Again, the importance of providing all amino acids is utmost because lacking one will result in a protein deficiency. Is, is it you were tried to use or write a, uh, a, a, an English paper without the letter A? It's just not going to work. And so you need every one of these amino acids to meet protein needs. And so aside from crude protein, as I said, you need to look at our essential amino acids. I'm going to pull two out that are of utmost importance. These are lysine and methionine. Now we'll talk about the ingredients that make up the bulk of uh, poultry feed during a, a subsequent lecture, 
Uh, but but you've already seen that corn is a major constituent, and in in the U.S., corn and soy make up the bulk. Corn and soy being meal make up the bulk of all poultry diets, and in these diets, the, I'm sorry, in these diets, these poultry diets, um, in those diets, in, in corn soy diets, methionine and lysine are the first limiting amino acids that need to be watched, and you'll often see them given in pure crystalline form, and they'll be written as L-lysine and L-methionine. And so you'll often see these two in ingredients. All right, so we want to ensure that we have the amino acid composition to meet the uh, requirements uh, for the birds so that they can meet their full genetic potential. And now protein is relatively expensive, so the, the ingredients that have uh, high amounts of protein typically cost more. And so we don't want to overuse protein uh, for energy purposes. Um, any excessive protein that is in the diet will, will be metabolized as, as energy or used as energy and contribute to ME, but it's just not efficient. And so the least cost feed formulation is going to be where you meet your protein needs and then subsequently meet your metabolizing energy needs through the use of fats and carbohydrates. All right, so let's look at the protein content in um, broiler diets. And so in a broiler diet, you'll typically have two to three different stages. So in this case, we have a starter, a grower, and a finisher. And as you'll see, as you progress toward market, um, or as you progress in maturity of the chicken, protein content of the diet drops. And so when we have our case study on Friday, um, you'll have to hypothesize as to why you think protein content drops um, as the bird matures. Now we will have a subsequent lecture on feed and the, the ingredients of feed and all of those sources when it comes to feed formulation. But since protein is very important, I thought we could look at um, some widely used protein sources. So if you remember corn, which is the bulk of uh, ingredient in the U.S. broiler diet, it typically provides you around 10 to 20 percent of crude protein, but it's going to be limiting in meeting methionine and lysine needs. And so we often substitute and use soybean meal, which is a very protein-rich meal. Um, it's very widely used. It's 48% protein, very rich in protein. And the limiting amino acid is methionine. And so that's why when you do a corn poultry diet, you often see um, synthetic or crystalline methionine used to uh, overcome this lack of methionine in our main two ingredients. Some others, you can see cotton seed meal. This is a, um, a very nutrient or protein rich um, uh, ingredient. So it can be used in broilers up to about 50%. It's not used in layers because it has this chemical known as gossypol, which can discolor the yolks and then that's just not gonna be marketable. Um, some other alternatives include linseed, but you need to keep it pretty low or you're going to have a laxative effect and you don't want wet litter uh, in your house. We'll talk about that during our management lectures. Uh, fish meal, very rich. It's a good source, but I wouldn't use it higher than 2 to 5% because you could get a fishy flavor to meat or eggs. However, it can be used and very good for eggs because including fish meal in the diet will provide the eggs with omega oh my messy writing omega-3 fatty acids and omega-3 fatty acids are a very healthy fatty acid um, that uh, consumers will pay a premium for and that's because this is uh, this omega-3 fatty acid will increase your healthy cholesterol which is your HDLs and so it is recommended to increase your omega-3 intake in one way is to eat eggs who've had fish meal. 
some other um, protein supplements include meat packaging byproducts such as poultry byproduct. Um, these are relatively cheap and because they uh, contain bone typically they'll be a nice source of our minerals which we'll talk about later uh, but these minerals are very important in diet formulation calcium and phosphorus. Okay so let's look at a sample broiler formula. Um, if we're looking at the diet about 73 sorry about this about 73 percent 72 percent is going to be from king corn and that is going to provide you a lot of your metabolizing energy and you know a little protein the bulk of your protein is going to come from our soybean meal and then you can have other uh, protein sources that we discuss so here we have fish meal and poultry byproduct and so these can be used because typically they're a little cheaper than the soybean meal and so you can use them at lower levels and these low levels will provide you the amino acids and proteins you need without uh, you know the fishy smell here um, and, and, and to compensate for those limiting amino acids you'll often find uh, purified or crystalline synthetic amino acids such as lysine and sometimes L-methionine. Okay, so we can also consider water when we're talking about poultry nutrition. Because if you remember, um, in the digestive system, uh, water was vital uh, in, in, in our digestion of the macromolecules. And so the use of water for hydrolysis, re hydrolysis reactions is going to allow us to break down the proteins into the amino acids and the starch into the monosaturides. Um, water is also very important as it's the major constituent of blood and lymph, which is going to be responsible for transporting these nutrients that we absorb, as well as the waste as a, as a result of cell respiration. It's also very important in temperature regulation. And so you'll see that, that poultry will, or chickens, will increase their fluid intake as temperatures rise because one way that they're able to dissipate internal heat in a high temperature house is through panting, which is going to have a lot of water waste with that. Now there's been an established relationship between feed intake and water intake. And so chickens will need about two grams of water per one gram of feed. And so both Dr. Lacey and Dr. Pesty both professors here at UGA have contributed to this knowledge. And so Dr. Lacey has established that a five pound broiler will consume about 18 pounds of water compared to approximately 10 pounds of feed. Whereas Dr. Pesty established that the daily water consumption of a broiler could be found by multiplying the age of the bird in days by 0.2 ounces. And so this all makes for, this relationship makes for a an application and so knowing this um, that that water consumption as you can see here in blue is directly correlated with feed consumption you can by measuring the amount of water consumed get an estimate of feed consumption now it's very hard to measure how much feed was consumed where it's easy to do so with water because you're gonna have water meters at the intakes of your poultry houses or if you don't they're easily installed and you can measure the amount of water coming in and out and therefore the amount of water consumed by the birds and by measuring the amount of water consumed you'll get an estimate of how much feed was consumed so that concludes for protein and water and so but up next we'll look at micronutrients including the vitamins and minerals um, and we'll also, in doing so, look at a lot of deficiencies that are associated with poor feed formulation. Thanks, and see you next time.